they care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio, once again from London, England. And, of course, we are here in London at uh, the behest of the Los Angeles Kings, who brought us here for the big events this weekend, where uh, the National Hockey League will play their first two official games uh, in Europe. Never been done before. The National Hockey League full of uh, European players. Yet uh, there's never been a National Hockey League game played in Europe. And uh, that's changing this weekend. With the LA Kings playing the uh, Anaheim Ducks at the O2 Arena. By the way, the O2 Arena, formerly known as the Millennium Dome, which had been one of the bankrupt public works projects that uh, usually uh, follow some big event. You know, the Olympics in many cities, uh, there follows a bankruptcy of the uh, corporation that puts together the Olympic uh, venues. Uh, The New York World's Fair of the 1960s, that ended up bankrupt. Many of these events end up bankrupt. Many of these buildings end up abandoned. And that was true of the Millennium Dome, which was taken over by uh, AEG Corporation, which is a... uh, company that owns Staples Center and the Los Angeles Kings. They took it over, revamped it, and it is now the O2 Arena. And uh, so far, the thing has been a raging success. We're doing a little reading on that today and found out how many concerts they've had, how many events have been sellouts. And not only are these two NHL games being played here this weekend, but uh, next week there's going to be an NBA game played here. It's pretty outrageous. It's all good. So uh, NHL hockey in uh, London this weekend, we are here for that. And we are here to enjoy London. And we are enjoying it. Indian food, by the way. We had Indian food, uh, which was uh, just spectacular right off Bond Street. Nice and spicy. The way we like it. It's very good. And... Uh, before I further ado, let me get to uh, a story. Of course, here we are. We're, we're kind of international this week. I'm sitting here in London with a story from the Toronto newspaper, the Globe and Mail. And here it is. They have a column in there called Group Therapy, which they say is a weekly relationship-based advice column that allows readers to contribute their wisdom. Oh, boy. Says here, each week we'll offer up a problem for you to weigh in on and then publish the most lively responses. And uh, the columnist's name is Claudia Day. Here is the question from a reader of the Toronto Globe and Mail. I recently broke off my relationship with my boyfriend. He is a great guy. Sensitive, smart, fun. And he always treated me very well. Get rid of that guy. Get rid of him, for God's sake. She says, the problem was that we had been dating for more than two years and had not made any progress in our relationship. Oh, boy, here we go. (laughs) Not make any progress. Where is this going? What am I to you? Am I your girlfriend? Am I your... Am I your squeeze? Am I your F buddy? What am I? I asked my uh, friends, you know, uh, to tell me what uh, they think I am, and they think I'm nothing but a booty call. What am I? What is this turning into? Where are we going? Yeah. She says, we never lived together. And he feels that maybe in a few years he will be ready for marriage and possibly kids. But can't imagine it will be before then. 
Now, by the way, some of this answers itself in the second paragraph. I am in my mid-30s and know I want to have children. And I feel some time pressure because of that. He is in his late 20s and obviously feels no pressure. Well, of course he feels no pressure. You know, if you were looking for a sperm donor, you should have dated somebody your own age, lady. You know, here's another example. We, we read one of those stories on the air recently, and these stories are appearing everywhere about older men, younger women. It's the new fangled thing. It's the big rage. Older women dating younger men. Can it work? Yes, it can. There are so many examples. It's so wonderful. But here's an example. The guy is great, sensitive, smart, fun, treats the woman well. She breaks up with him. Because he's not ready to, to to pump out kids at a moment's notice when she's ready. He's not ready, be, not because he's immature. He's in his late 20s. By the way, lady, why weren't you having children in your late 20s? You know why? Because you were out having fun. You were out getting boned. You were out having a good time. And then you finally decided, you know, oh boy, now I have to have kids And so then you took yourself off the market. You weren't out there in your late 20s uh, making demands on guys. Oh, no, no, no. All the guys you were having sex with, you were just having a good time. And it was okay with you. And now that you've decided as the woman, now you have to be in control, right? There you are. You're in your mid-30s. Why won't he do what I tell him to do? Jesus She goes on to say, I ended things because I didn't feel that I could just wait for him indefinitely. Especially because he is offering me no commitment. If he did, he should be committed. Again, remember, this is not an abuser. This is not a thoughtless person. This is not a guy who, uh, you know, is a creep. Listen to the word she used to describe him. Great, sensitive, smart, fun, and he always treated her well. But he's not obedient. How dare he not do what she says? And again, lady, you know, clearly you're one of these modern women who decides, you know what, I'm going to date younger men. Because I can, because they're so hot. I want to be with a hot guy. There's all these hot young guys out there. and Why should only be guys who can date hot young women? Why can't I date a hot young man? This is why. This is why. Because now that you feel your biological time clock ticking, you feel uh, because you are older than him, you should be able to pull rank on him and be like mommy and tell him what he's supposed to do. And when he doesn't obey, you're going to dump him. She says, I feel that after two years, we should be planning for the future together. Did I give up too soon? (laughs) Now, the response from the columnist goes like this. You did the right thing. You saved dated for more than two years, but he has no idea of when or if he'll be ready for a deeper commitment. By the way, that's not his fault. It's not his fault. Although I know of couples who dated for very long periods before getting married, that's not usually the case. If after two years he doesn't know whether he can commit, then he probably never will. I suspect he didn't want to commit but was too scared to say so. Well, how would you even know that? No doubt this babe was just getting boned and enjoying the hell out of it and one day looked at the calendar. Realized the last egg was coming soon. You know, how do you know they even discussed this? You know, I mean, uh, here she is. And how did she get to her mid-30s without being married, without having any kids? How did she get to the mid-30s without being married and having any kids? How? Because she was boning guys left and right, and here she was boning a guy who's probably 10 years younger than she is, and she was real happy with it. And then, of course, because he gave her a good bone, suddenly she's feeling attached to him and now wants him to do what she says, which he won't. Good for him. And that's why you guys should not uh, date older women any more than getting a few bangs out of the game and then moving on, because this is how they get psychotic. But get this, here's the rest of what the columnist said, which is just fascinating. 
Either way, since you're in your mid-30s and you want children, you made the right choice. It sounds like you and he were at different stages in life. You're a fully grown adult ready for the big commitments of life, while he sounds like he still has some growing up to do. Oh, baby. Let's look at some of the responses from the readers here, shall we? I just love this. Jesus. One person who wrote in said, you can be sure of one thing. The next two years will pass just as surely as the the past two. You had a choice. You could have remained as you had been, twiddling your thumbs and hoping that Mr. Nice Guy will eventually propose and that you two would stroll off into the sunset and live happily ever after. You made a wise choice. You gave him the time and space he needs to mature and decide just how and with whom he wants to spend the rest of his life. Meanwhile, look after your own interests. Mr. Wright may be just around the corner, but you have to be available and open to a new relationship. In two years, you could be happily married and pregnant. This past period may be remembered only as a frustrating prelude to the real thing. Alternatively, if Mr. Nice Guy returns and proposes, you still come out ahead. You'll well, sure you come out ahead. Come out ahead because you've browbeaten the guy and he's now a hostage. You know, you used uh, terrorism to force him to do what you want, which is not what he wants. And that's a great idea, right? Get the guy to do something he really doesn't want to do, like having a child. Then later on when he figures out he's not happy or he got bamboozled, he doesn't like the child, he doesn't help you with the child, he doesn't want to participate with the child, maybe he leaves you. And then you're stuck with the kid and living alone. That would not be a good outcome for you. Unbelievable. The next one says, if you left him and he did not hold you back, you made the right decision. You need to find a man who shares with you the same life goal. Well, that, that may very well be true. You're telling me you didn't know what his life goal was when you started boning him two years ago? Your life goal at the time was getting boned by a much younger guy. That was your life goal. Then when you realized how old you were getting, suddenly you realized that you uh, you needed to uh, to, to to torture him and force him into having a baby when you're ready and he's not. Bottom line. Says here, after two years, you should at least have a common direction where you want to head. Your boyfriend does not seem to have a strong sense of family and is not committed to having kids. Well, he's just not committed to it now. You don't know that he won't be committed to it when he's in his mid-30s. Maybe he wants to have fun until his mid-30s. Ever think of that? Does that make him immature? By the way, the woman who wrote the letter, was she immature for waiting until her mid-30s to have a baby? Was she immature? I love how the guy is immature if he doesn't want to do what the woman wants her to do right away. But uh, if she uh, decides that she wants to bone much younger guys until she's 35 years old, well, that's liberating, that's wonderful, women are, uh, you know, finally equal to men, blah, blah, blah. I mean, this is outrageous. It's outrageous. It goes on and on like that. This idea that uh, this, this guy in his late 20s is just supposed to submit just supposed to get on his knees and perform, just supposed to obey this broad who now is already over the hill. He's supposed to do what she says. And if he does it, he's immature and not ready for responsibility. We never talk about whether she was mature or ready for responsibility when she was his age. Only that he is immature. Frankly, I think he should move on and say, the hell with you. Who needs you? And this is why I tell you guys, don't be getting involved with these women. Don't be getting involved with these baby machines, these these over-the-hill babes, the ones who are uh, have the stink of death on them, ones who are all freaking out. Don't be getting involved with them because this is what you get, women writing letters to the advice column at the newspaper. For God's sake, you don't want that. You don't. All you guys were boning the older chicks. I, I've recommended that, by the way, as a placeholder until you find something really good. I've recommended that. But the point is you have to get out. You have to get out before she starts acting like this. And start finding some other poor sucker who hasn't realized her biological time clock is ticking. That's only fair, right? Tom Likus. 
1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas. As I have said on this program many times, if Helen Keller had a granddaughter who's a 9 or a 10, that's a perfect match. And by the way, honey, by the way, honey, if you're out there, ugh, ugh, ugh. <laughs> it's the Tom Likas Show. Tom, we're talking about a, uh, an advice column in the Toronto Globe and Mail newspaper. And uh, it's not just supporters who wrote in. Well, the woman who uh, bailed on her boyfriend of two years, she's in her mid-30s, he's in his late 20s. But that immature bastard isn't ready to have children when she wants them. So she dumped his ass. Listen to some of these. One person writes in and says, why is it that if you don't want to rush off and tie yourself down, you're branded immature, where people who are ready to rush off and get hitched are mature and, quote, grown up. If he's happy with the place the relationship is at, what's wrong with that? It really doesn't strike me as being his fault that his woman has got the marriage bug. Here's another one. Sure, leave the guy. After all, he treated you well and was kind, loving and respectful and gave you your space. Then you wonder why men won't commit. If he was a loser but moved in, would you feel better? (laughs) I just love that. Hey, there's one more I want you to hear. Some of these are just amazing, amazing, amazing. (laughs) Here is one. He writes in and says, The question and answers left me laughing out loud. He treated her well. He has all the right qualities. So she dumped him because he didn't want to put a bun in her oven after two years. Ha, ha, ha. Way to go. What kind of freaky logic is at play here? So now she is in her mid-30s and single again and back at the starting line. Her only option now is to find a male who is willing to marry her and fill her belly in, what, under a year? She was not willing to invest another year or two with Mr. Perfect, but is willing to grab whatever is handy to meet her timelines. And all the women giving her advice are applauding her choice. And women wonder why men have a fear of committing. What I'm talking about, boys. This is what I'm talking about. By the way, don't say fear of committing. I'm not afraid of committing. I'm not. Because I won't do something doesn't mean I'm not afraid. Doesn't mean I'm afraid of it. Okay. I'm not going to get a no money down mortgage. What, because I'm afraid of mortgages? No, I don't think it's a good idea. It's not a wise business decision. I'm not going to buy a a Rolls Royce. Not because I'm afraid of cars. It wouldn't be a good investment for me. It doesn't make me afraid. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Here is Nick on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Nick. Hey, Tom. Thanks for having me on the line. Sure. Uh, just a question. You had mentioned earlier that, uh, you know, telling us guys, I'm 26, by the way, um, living in Southern California, you know, basically kind of just living a good life, listening to your advice. And I'm in an actual relationship right now with um, uh, an older woman, but she's she's actually 40, um, and she already has a uh, – she's out of a marriage, and she has, I think, uh, two kids. And just wondering what you think about, about that. I mean, there's no pressure. She's never even brought up marriage, quite frankly. She said she's not interested. Why um, do you just, need a relationship? Why? Uh, I, I just don't, personally, it's just, um, she's cool. She's really hot. And, uh, you know, I'm a single yeah, but you could date. You could, you could date her. You do not have to be in a relationship. No, I know. I just, for me, dating is, is work. I, I, I work really hard. And, uh, I'm just, I'm a, like I said, I'm a single dad. There is no, there's no mom. So, for me to have this, you know, hot girl with her own money who doesn't really make demands on my time, and it's basically, you know, kind of she puts out when I want it kind of thing, wondering what you, what you think about something like that. Well, I mean, you know, the thing is, here's what, like, listen to what you're, you're doing. You First you call me and ask me my opinion. And then when I start to give you my opinion, you start trying to convince me that I'm wrong and you're right. I mean, you don't want my opinion. You've already made your decision. 
No, no, I, I, I was just, I'm a first-time caller, a long-time listener. I'm definitely interested to know your opinion. I think um, even when they're 40, you run the risk that they get so attached that they will try to have one last baby with you. No matter what they say, they always say they don't want children or they don't want to get married or they're, uh, uh, they don't need commitment. But, but women are psychotic and eventually that's what they will do. Can they even, can they, um, can I even have season 40 or 42 or something like that? Do they have I mean, to be 40 or 42? Her, what do you mean? What if they got like their tubes, tubes tied or something like that? Are her tubes tied? Uh, honestly, I don't know. Is yeah, that you don't that? know. And, and would you like to bet they're not? Well, I'm using a condom anyway, always, you know, per your that, That's not my point. Uh, would you would you like to bet that her tubes are not tied? I I, I wouldn't know one way or the other. Uh, I, well, said, why don't why answer. don't you ask? Um, no, it's, you're right. I mean, it's a good question to ask, but I'm wondering if, if I ask that. Have question, you ever said to the following question? Ask exactly the way I'm going to ask it. What would you do if you accidentally got pregnant? Um, actually, I did ask her that question before. What was the um, answer? Well, <laughs> it wasn't actually a really good answer. She said, well, I don't believe in abortion. Kind of there we out. go, boys. There <laughs> we go. Right there. So, by the way, the fact that she gave you that answer means her tubes are not tied. You know that, right? Uh, yeah, I guess it's, it's when I asked her that, she should have just said, well, my tubes are not working. Well, don't you think she it. would have said that? Yeah. Right. So she has a tighter tube. Now, now the next question is, why do you think she hasn't done that? Right. So answer. Anyway, answer. Do you want the answer? Do you want the answer? Yes. Because she's trying to keep her options open. So what do you think is a safe, safe amount of time to kind of have fun with with, a, with an older woman before you move on? Or, I mean, should you wait till you hear the warning signs? Right. or The word relationship, that's trouble. All right. So I the word boyfriend or girlfriend, that's trouble. All right. Okay, so if she ever... The word commitment, the word monogamy. Actually, I mean, she's cool about that kind of stuff. Like, she said, you know, like, I mean, we've had, like, a threesome before. She lets me do whatever I want, really. But... Yeah, yeah, well, why don't you just go date other women? Honestly, it's like, for me, it's, it's, it's... It's work. Stop with it's work. What if you ran into a hot chick? You're a pussy. You wouldn't you wouldn't uh, hit it. You wouldn't. Because I have a girlfriend. She's 40 and she's go so, so cool. I don't want to cheat on her. That's you. That's you. <laughs> Isn't it? Well, I, I actually don't believe in in cheating like you said. There but, we go. Uh, you believe in threesomes though. You have a very interesting morality there. Ah, uh, well, you know, she was it was her call. I mean, basically the the, the uh I think if she would get upset if, if I just did that. And uh, you just said she's cool and she lets you do whatever you want. Well, yeah, she I does mean, it, does she? Well, I've never actually just, you know, banged another chicken and said, "Hey, I." Just you said she lets you do whatever you want. Well, whatever I've asked, she has. She oh, has well, you, well, the fact is, you just haven't told her you wanted that yet, and you already know what the answer would be: no. Right. Well, right, honestly, so she does, so so we've now revealed that she does not let you do whatever you want, does she? No, I mean everything that I've ever wanted to do, she's been okay with. No, I mean, no, never... everything you've asked her for, she's allowed you to do. Well, you're kind of turning my words around, but yeah, I mean, I guess no, that's, that's saying, that. Yeah. No, your words are are twisted to me, and I'm untwisting them. And the only thing, and by the way, you didn't even ask her for a threesome. She offered it up to you, and you said, okay. What have you asked her for? Um, what have I asked her for? I, I wasn't really meaning more, I wasn't really talking about, like, more of the sexual things. I was talking more of just kind of my own freedom to do whatever I want. Uh, you know, well, like what if you want to bang other chicks? Uh, that's actually a good question. I wonder what she'd say to that. I know we know what she'd say to that. No. I think I'm going to actually ask her that. Just to, yeah, well, she would say no. I'm telling you right now. I'm saving you the time. Okay, well, how about this? I mean, is that, for instance... you got to watch your mouth because we're on the air. And that word is not allowable on the air. Okay? Sorry. Now, um, the fact is, she's your girlfriend. And she calls herself your girlfriend, doesn't she? Yeah, she does. And you're the boyfriend, aren't you? 
Yeah, yeah. Right. And she has a tighter tubes. Right. If she's not planning on having children, why hasn't she done that? Uh, I'm not sure. Is it, is, that, is it painful, maybe? I don't know. Uh, I don't <laughs> Please. Know. More painful than having a child? Good point. Which she's already done? Yeah, she, I think she's got two. Yeah. So you don't even know how many kids she has. Oh, I know she has one. The other, oh, oh, the other one, I think, is older in a way, and I don't. We just, uh, I know she has the other one because I'm with her. So. How old is the other one? Seven. The older one is seven. Yeah. Why is it living with her? Excuse me. Why, Why is it the seven-year-old living with her? She is. It's uh, half and half with the. Uh, you just said the older one is not living with her. How old is the older one who's not living the with her? One, the older oh, one. Jesus the older Christ, one's in this college. is painful. The other one's in college. Yeah. What was she? Seventeen when she had the first one. I believe so. Something so you know, crazy. do you do you do you see what we're dealing with here? Well, yeah, but then again, I was really young when I had my son too. I mean, and I've grown up. That's not the point. I'm looking out for you. You know, just because you made a stupid mistake doesn't mean that you should hook up with other people who made the same stupid mistake. No, no, I agree with you. I mean, that's why I'm asking. So if she starts uh, kind of making noise about uh, certain things. She's done it. You're the boyfriend. So it's time to get out. It's time to go. All right. Because I'm telling you, condoms leak. They slip. They occasionally fail. Do you live I, with her? I've, I've, do you think I'm too young to... Uh, I've actually been thinking about it because I already have a kid. I've been thinking about you know getting a vasectomy. Am I too young for that? I don't think you're ever too young for a vasectomy. But the point is, it, whether you get one or not, the fact that she hasn't had her tubes tied means she wants to leave the options open to have a baby. Right. No matter what she tells you. And she told you if she got pregnant, she doesn't believe in abortion. She believes in threesomes. She believes in getting knocked up as a teenager. But abortion, oh, that would be wrong. <laughs> yeah, and That I don't means we're not that. talking about her religious beliefs here. We are uh, talking about somebody who wants to have another baby. Yeah, she's not. Uh, she's an atheist. She's not. Um, who doesn't a- believe in abortion. Well, that's great. But she believes in fornication and she believes in threesomes. Right. Right. Ever see the inconsistency of any of this? Yeah, I guess uh, for me, I don't know. I just look at it. Wow, this, this chick's cool, and <laughs> kind of lets me do my thing. But I can see where you're coming from too, and I see some of the danger signs now. Do you live with her? No, 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 no. And she's never even been to my place. I, I, I've listened to your advice there. <laughs> but wait a minute, you have a girlfriend. That's not my advice for you. Well. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, I, you know, I don't want, it's not a, this has only been about a month, I guess. A month? Yeah, maybe a month and a half. I, wait a minute. And you've been a listener for how long? Uh, let's see. Probably since March. So you have a girlfriend who's a single mother, and you've been listening to my advice? Trying to. I wish I had listened to you before I became a single father. <laughs> Well, that's true, but what do I say about dating single mother? She's uh, a boy that likes the plague. <laughs> right. And I see here on the screen, Nick, you are 26 years old. Yeah. 26. I mean, do you need a, a, a permanent relationship with somebody right now? No, I, no, no, I don't need a permanent relationship. I just... I don't really want to go after, I don't know, I mean, it's, I guess I don't, it, you know, I've got this thing and it kind of takes care of uh, my You've had it for a have. month. You're talking about it like you've been with her for five years. Yeah, I mean, I was doing the dating thing before and it was like a pain in the butt. The dating thing. What, was it a pain in the butt to have sex with various women? Oh, no, God. No, that's no, no, like the going, like. Just uh, the whole process, like taking, you know, going out to dinner, taking them out, meeting, talking about mundane things before you, you know, take them back to their place or whatever. And yeah, it's easy to talk about mundane him. things with your girlfriend, the single mother. We don't really talk 
about a lot of stuff. It's that's a great relationship. Know. So you rarely talk. <laughs> After one month, she expects complete monogamy. Uh, honestly, wait, wait, wait. I, I don't. I don't know if if she does or not. I, I should ask her that. I mean. And by the way, <laughs> what kind of birth control is she on? Let me guess. You don't know. Uh, I don't know. How do you have sex with somebody without knowing that? Using my condoms, always. And 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 you're completely convinced they're 100 percent effective? No, I know they're not. Like, what is it, 95 percent? So you yourself know you're running a risk of having a baby with this woman. Honestly, I I, I thought that uh, she was well because if I asked her, I did ask her that comment. I mean, I told her, hey, you know, I don't want to become a father again. What's your position on that? And she's like, oh, I don't want any more kids. But I don't know. Listen carefully to the way people phrase things. I don't want to have any more kids does not mean the same thing as I'm not going to have any more kids. I don't want to have any more kids means I don't want to have any more kids. But my goodness, if 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 I get pregnant, I guess I'm going to be having a kid even though I don't want to. Because she doesn't believe in abortion. Right. She told you that. Right. So you had all the information you needed. Right. But you ignored it, didn't you? Yeah, I guess I got lost in the uh, kind of convenience of the, um, uh, I guess, sexual Pal, can't you just make, get another convenient person who is, like, completely unencumbered? Yeah, you're right. I probably could. I just, maybe I'm, I'm lazy. I don't want to put in the effort. But you're right. I should just kind of find a... See, the problem is, I mean, when I start dating chicks my own age, it comes with its own host of problems. But do you understand that the reason it was so easy is because this is somebody who, if your sperm finds its way in there, she'll be happy to have your baby? That's why she's so easy? Yeah. No, you're right. That's why there's no effort involved. And that's why she doesn't, uh, that's probably why she doesn't, like, make a lot of demands on my time as long as I'm... How long does it take to knock her up? Right. Maybe that's all she wants from you. Right. That's a whole... That's another way of looking at it. Wow. All right. Hang on a second here, Nick. Let me get Justin on the line. Justin, what did you want to say to Nick? First off, I want to say, what are you doing being 26, being with a 40-year-old man? He's hot, man. She looks like Michelle Pfeiffer. I'm telling you. Don't lie to us, though. We all know that she's probably some 40-year-old mid-class suburban mom who has probably nothing going for her. And, I mean, I don't know if I can say this on the V word on the air, but her vagina has got to be blown up. <laughs> uh, hey, man, Southern California is the plastic surgery capital of the world. No, she looks good. Actually, I, I live in Southern California myself. And you say, wait a minute. Are you saying she had a roast beef Oh, I don't know. Uh, it does look uh, clean in that area. <laughs> kind of beefy? No, no beef curtains. Just checking. Beef curtains, Definitely. And after the fact, being that you're 26, I'm 24, and I'm definitely out there hitting all kinds of tail. I would never be strapped down. I'm I'm just like Tom Likas. I'd... I want to be single forever. Women are crazy. Yeah, I hear you. I, I mean, my situation is a little different than yours, though, because I'm I'm a single dad and I have my son full time, so I, I can't. Well, what do you? What were you doing being a single dad in the first place? You should have been listening to Tom a long time ago. Actually, honestly, that was um, that was uh, I it could have I could have done the child support route and just seeing him once in a while, but child support route. You have the opportunity not to take that route by putting uh, a condom on or, or asking something, having some sort of agreement, right, Tom? You could have not had a baby, is what he's saying here. I, I just didn't. I didn't want uh, my anything that came from me or my son to be raised by that particular uh, person. I just, yeah, but why did you have a baby with that particular person? Exactly. Well, yeah, why exactly. I, <laughs> I was listening to, to like this one on one before that happened, but since it did happen, I wasn't just gonna. Let my son be raised by a, a waste of air. So now we want to move over to the trailer trash that uh, got knocked up as a teenager and now is into having threesomes. Uh, but, uh, no, but uh, by the way, doesn't believe in abortion and uh, could very well get pregnant again. Again. 
and while you're still in the relationship, it's, it's boggling my mind. Right. Why aren't you out there trying to get as much tail as you can right now? You're 26. You're still so young. 26, bro. Right. No, I, live in California. I live in Southern California, too. There's tail for days. Yeah, and you're with, <laughs> you're with somebody's mom. You know how many college girls there are in Southern California? Tell them, Tom. Oh, please. Yeah, yeah. I don't think we can count them all. And that doesn't count the ones who are coming to visit. Exactly. The ones that are just coming to live here just to go to school, just to try to get hotter, just so they can get pounded more. Right. No, you guys, you guys are right. Yeah, you kind of opened my eyes. I mean, I don't... Well, let me ask you this, Tom. I mean, just bottom line, is there any question I could ask, any answer she would give where you would say, you know, it's probably okay to stay in this a couple, a little bit longer? No. Or, not, no. not from my point of view. Possible. Pick up your balls out of your out of her hand and get out of there. By the way, your track record's none too good. You already made this mistake once before. Right. No, all right. I, yeah, oh, I I totally own up. And to that. you got I you. Know that. No, no, well, I don't know well, then, you... then don't. I'm, all I can say to you is don't repeat that mistake for Christ's sake. Tom Likas. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. I want to talk first about the 167 pound nine. I don't buy that for a minute. No, I don't either. I think you've got to be drugly. You've got to be drunk and ugly to get her later on in the evening. Drugly. <laughs> it's the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. It's Jason. Hello, Jason. You're on the Tom Likas Show. We'll need you guys in the studio to punch up line six because the screen went away. Jason. Right. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's a huge honor, man. Um, basically, just in regarding to what you were saying before the letter you were reading, um, I think that just women need to stop getting in these relationships where they just, for some reason, decide to settle down because there was somebody that they feel that they can tolerate and then try to change that person. You know, like, I'm... I'm not in, you know, I know your whole, your whole feeling on marriage that you're completely against it. I'm, I can't really agree with that. I'm not definitely for it, but I don't think that you could really settle down with somebody in that way if you're not, if you don't completely like that person, you know, if you're not, if you have really any big problems. I mean, well, as I always say, women like to buy fixer uppers. Uh, you know, if uh, uh, they meet a man and, uh, you know, he has habits uh, that she doesn't like or uh, he has goals in life that she doesn't agree with, uh, that does not stop a woman from getting into a relationship. Yeah, uh, no she says, well, you know, once I, once I get under the hood, I'm going to fix this thing. But there's no real reason to do that. I mean, it's not, well, in, in terms of under the hood, you know, it's not like we're, it's not like people are a car. You don't get it to try and fix it up unless I guess that's actually their hobby. Um, but... I, I don't see how that, I mean, I guess I don't see how doing that in a marriage really helps anybody. Um, I mean, yeah, I'm only, I'm only 20 years old, so I haven't really made any decisions either way. But I've, I've pretty much decided that I'm not going to settle down into anything at all if I don't feel extremely comfortable with it. If there's one thing that pushes me out of it, then I'm leaving. Well, but besides at your age, you don't need to settle into anything. Oh, no, of course not. No, I mean, if I, I'm not... I mean, I'm not, I'm not committing myself to anything yet, and the only reason I will is if something comes my way. I'm not going to go looking for it, because as far as I've seen, that's where most people go wrong. But I haven't completely ruled it out, because, I mean, I was, I've, you know, I was raised in the whole family life and everything up until I started listening to you about, I don't know, a year or two ago. I've pretty much been looking into the future, thinking that that's where I'm going to end up, and now I don't know that that's necessarily the case, which... I, well, I'm glad to hear that. Thank you for the call. The Tom Likas Show.